This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. What's up guys, Leon here. Welcome back to Tesla on Mare. Sometimes it can be really frustrating to build a Tesla call. I think you know what I mean. I also keep getting to the point where I'm wondering why I'm actually doing this shit. Today I want to show you three life hacks that makes my life and hopefully yours way easier. Maybe you don't know them yet. The most important part of the Tesla coil is the so-called secondary coil. Depending on the size of the Tesla coil, the secondary coil can be smaller or larger. The thickness of the used wire also matters. The thicker the wire is, the easier it will be for us to wind the coil by hand. Winding a coil by hand can sometimes take ages. Often the result is not satisfying either. You quickly leave a gap or the windings overlap. But this does not have to be. All you need is a cordless drill, some tape, a drill bit or a large screw, the copper wire and a tube. First, we drill a small hole at each end of the tube. Then we clamp the drill bit or the screw in the cordless drill. After that, we attach the tape and spin everything until the layer of tape is thick enough for the pipe to fit perfectly. We path the wire through the bottom hole. We can fix the end of the wire with some tape. Now let's start winding. For this we put the cordless drill on a flat surface. With one hand we control the speed, with the other hand we guide the wire. And we're done, that looks pretty good. With this method I have already wound coals with wire as thin as my hair. Of course, you can also go one step further and build a coil winding machine. It will do all the work for you. Want to see more of this machine? Let me know in the comments. As Tesla coilers, we are confronted with dead MOSFETs every day. Sometimes this can be very hard. I think everybody of you know that. You just make a perfect point-to-point -point setup. You plug in the power supply and are so excited to see the lightnings. And then this happens. The MOSFET died. Now we have to disassemble our beautiful setup and somehow remove the MOSFET. After 10 rounds the setup looks anything but nice and you don't even know where the gate was connected again. Also for this there is a simple solution. We use so-called PTR connectors. A PTR means print. These are little connectors that are attached on a PCB. And while talking about PCB, you know what that means. That reminds me of the sponsor of today's video, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturer which allows you to make your own PCBs. For only $2 you already get 5 PCBs. If that is not a good price, you can even go one step further. If you use the PCB assembly service, you don't even have to assemble the boards. Believe me, especially with SMD components you save a lot of trouble. The only thing you have to do is save your Gerber file as a zip file. Once this is done, select the desired parameters. Lead free? <laughs> yeah, definitely. What color are you in favor of? <laughs> Purple is sexy, isn't it? Just upload the file, order and you're done. Within 24 hours your PCB will be produced. And a few days later they will arrive. If you register at JLC PCB via the link in the video description, you will get 4 coupons with a total value of $27. All we need is a connector with 3 pins. The pins of a TO247 MOSFET or IGBT fit perfectly into such a connector. With a screwdriver we can now easily attach the MOSFET. The MOSFET or IGBT with the connector can now be installed in any kind of Tesla cold circuits. We never have to worry again about messing up the circuit when replacing the MOSFET. Practical, isn't it? What would a Tesla cold be without a top load? In my opinion a nice torus is what makes a coil a real Tesla coil. But the problem is, such a torus is not cheap. And they are usually also hard to get. And honestly guys, who want to have such a top load? Not that it just looks super goofy, 
it's also physically trash. For about only two bucks, we can easily make a high quality top load ourselves. For that, we only need two aluminum cans. After drinking them, we mark a line with some tape. Then we cut off the bottoms with a knife. The only important thing is that we don't cut the bottom all the way down, but leave some material left. Once this is done, we bend the edge of one half inwards. Now we all have to do is put both parts inside each other. For this you need some pressure and patience. We can either sand off the remaining paint or simply tape it over with aluminum tape, but I prefer sanding. If you like, you can drill a hole in the middle for a breakout point. This actually looks really good. So guys, I really hope that these little hacks will help you. Especially the replaceable MOSFET hack make my life a lot easier. Guys, in the next video I will publish the winner of the last video. So don't forget to comment and stay tuned guys. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed it today. If so, leave me a comment down below and then guys, we'll see us in the next video.